Staying active is what fuels my mind and great food fuels my body. Traveling inspires me to push harder and experiment with new cuisine. This is amazing. Just make really delicious food, simple, and it works. I'm Bijou Thomas. I'm a chef, an athlete, and I'm on a mission to travel the road less eaten. Nashville, Tennessee. Just hearing that will trigger immediate images of Dolly and Waylon, of Whiskey Row, of beautiful people dressed up in their finest boots and hats, all with the energy to match. Beyond the music, Nashville's culinary scene delights visitors with a diverse array of Southern comfort foods and innovative dishes, making it a true gastronomic destination. My visit actually begins at Leaper's Fork, an oasis of a town nestled in the foothills 30 minutes south of Nashville. I met up with my buddy Greg Irwin, who's a fellow cyclist and the drummer for the band Saint Motel. Greg, please tell me you're bringing me to a distillery first thing in the morning. Is that what's happening? I know it's 10.30 in the morning, but uh, sounds about right. never too early to have a little whiskey. This is amazing. Let's go get chased. After a quick change out of our cycling gear, the first stop is the beautiful Leaper's Fork Distillery to meet its general manager, Matt King. Matt's gonna give Greg and me an education about the whiskey making process. We might even get to sample some of the product along the way. Thank you for coming to Leaper's Fork Distillery. A little bit about us before we jump into yeah. the whiskey. We're a small craft distillery just located 45 minutes, 30 minutes south of Nashville. So we grow our own corn, we mill our own grains. The whole goal is being a true grain to glass distillery. We're probably the most inefficient distillery in the country by design. That's, good. That's uh, a good business model right yeah, there. Yeah. Quality driven over quantity driven, right? Nice. So we're doing about two barrels of whiskey a day. So everything here is done by us by hand. There is no outsourcing. There's no purchasing wow. of whiskey. Um, we really just, we want to make pre-prohibition style whiskey um, the same way you would have from 1801 to, to about 1910. And that's wow. kind of our goal here. But let's jump into some whiskey cool. since uh, we have some bees. So yeah, yeah. we have some whiskey here that we don't uh, actually distribute. So um, it's our white whiskey. Uh, we use it as an educational tool in this tasting room. This is going to wake your palate up. Is what 90 it's proof before lunch? 90 yeah. proof. Right, so here we go. Yeah, enjoy guys. Cheers. Mm. And then we go into the barrel with our whiskey. So that barrel is going to give us 100% of the color, 60% of the flavor profiles. This is our Tennessee whiskey. It is 100% done here by us. It's delicious. Uh, delicious. The only difference between that Tennessee whiskey you just tried and that bourbon next um, is that's going to have 15% wheat versus 15% rye. Thanks, Thank you. guys. Appreciate y'all. That's our flight we serve here at the distillery, but if you guys want to jump out in the distillery and, and uh, check out the, the process, we can do that. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. We're doing it. Welcome into the Whiskey Cathedral. This is our, our 5,000 square foot still house. If we could sum up everything we do in this room in one sentence, is we turn starch to sugar, sugar to alcohol, and then we separate alcohol and water. Really the first step in our process happens in this stainless steel tank over here. So through water, corn, rye, wheat, barley, all being added at different temperatures, different volumes, uh, we are trying to convert as much starch to sugar as possible. Tennessee, Kentucky, Scotland, and Ireland, Historically, we're known for whiskey making because of our limestone bedrock, right? Uh, with good water, we can make good whiskey. With bad water, we don't even have a chance. See, I so like that. I, I never realized there was an actual reason for it. I just thought it was good people like to drink well, it. That's why I moved here. Uh, well, this is because right. the limestone from water. One thing I learned was that all whiskey starts as moonshine. This clear, somewhat flavorless, and harsh liquor as it ages, picks up these beautiful notes of cedar and smoke and whatever wood barrels aging in. Another thing we learned is that the key components to making whiskey are simple. It's grains, yeast, and water. Combine those three, give it a little bit of time, and that creates the alcohol. Now, if you add some honey to the process, well, something magical happens. And that's what Matt and his team are doing. They're making a honey whiskey with the help of bees kept right here on the distillery grounds. What's happening here? We're gonna check out some bees today on yeah. the property. These are our bees from Greenwood Honey Company and we're partnered with Leaper's Fork Distillery. So let's go in some hives. We've all seen bee suits 
on TV or in movies, and they look like astronaut outfits. The man. But these are surprisingly comfortable to get into, and you got plenty of breathing room. And the coolest thing is you got the screen over your face so you can see and hear everything the bees are doing. And in some cases, they're landing literally an inch away from your eyeballs. That part was really, really cool. We're going to start out on this one. OK. Got to pick one, and uh, we'll see what we find. Whoa. Whoa. Pull this up. Hi, ladies. Mostly ladies. Mostly ladies. And we don't take them down here. That's their living honey for all the babies and where they store all the pollen and the nectar. But these two top boxes are the excess, and this is what we would take from. This would be like what's called a brood nest down here. The queen usually likes to stay within in the brood nest within these five center frames. Wow. Uh. <laughs> so if you take this flashlight and point it into the cell, oh. you'll see different size larva. If it's an egg, it looks like a, a rice, rice grain. piece of rice to keep yeah. straight up, and then a larva will start to form, and it will look like a, a pearly white T-shape with some royal jelly around okay, it. OK, yeah, I've seen the jelly. Check it out. We just found the queen. Oh, sick. Here she is. Oh, I see her in the middle. You see her? Wow. Right there. So she's a darker queen. See how she's a long, slender body? Uh -huh. She's she just making a, her way, huh? She's, she's very like, dark. Move. So, you've yeah. seen a good chunk of the hive now. Yeah. yeah. We found the queen, which is awesome. Yeah, that's... You guys want to go on a honey hunt? Yeah, yes, honey sir. hunt. Then pull it straight Whoa. out. How's that side? This side's looking nice and coated. Oh, see, we could harvest that one. Let's take that one, and uh, yeah. maybe we'll go play with some honey frames inside yeah. with the bourbon. All right, well, I want you guys to just experience raw honey straight from the hive, straight from the property, and then the bourbon, obviously, made right here, too. So why don't you grab a glass? OK. And you're just going to push it in. Whoa. And run it down. And then just get a little on your rim. All right, I'm going to do it. Go for it. But don't take all of it, because I want some. <laughs> Look how beautiful that is. Oh, my god. Wow. I'm going to keep doing this for a while, you guys. <laughs> Whoa. It is it. Yum. All right. Cheers, Yum. everybody. Cheers. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now you got to really let, uh, get that finish. <laughs> mm. Incredible. Leaper's Fork, what a special little town. Now, Craig and I are heading to the city of Nashville and visiting one of the most respected eateries in town. Turns out, the food scene in Nashville is way more than just hot chicken and barbecue. There are a host of world-class chefs like Nashville native Julia Sullivan and her restaurant, Henrietta Red. With multiple James Beard nominations and a welcoming vibe, Julia is helping to shape the next generation of Tennessee cuisine. Hello. Hello, chef. How are you? Hi. Good. Welcome, welcome. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Hi. welcome. Nice to meet you. Why do you come here all the time? Why do you love this place? There's not very many seafood places in Nashville that get it right. Yeah. yeah. This is one of those. Why would you tell people who have not been here, what's a good reason for them to come here? It is in this part of town that is just becoming gentrified. Yeah. And it's yeah. kind of hidden. It's a little off the beaten path, because you can drive here and go, oh my god, what did you get? And yeah. You stop here, and you can park and get on foot yeah. and hit all of these restaurants. It's oh. lovely meeting you. Thank you so much. We're in Germantown, which is on the north side of downtown Nashville. It's wonderful. It's just beautiful. Kind of uh, has this warehousey, old-timey feel, but it's incredible. Oh, oh amazing. Julia. Wow, 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 wow. It's so nice to meet you in person. Yeah. This place is incredible, so I'm excited to get to know you and the food a little bit more. Tell us all about this. All right, this dish is called Poppy's Caviar. So my dad used to make this party dish um, that was like sour cream, uh, improvised scallion vinaigrette, really cheap grocery store caviar, the kind you get in the little jars. Yeah. And then uh, he would just kind of dump it all on a plate, and serve it with saltines. And so he made kind of a high-end version of that. So dig in. The caviar was like such a beautiful, amazing dish. And to think about that having evolved from just a family favorite that her father would make for them, that's just so wonderful. And I'm sure we've all got stories like that. Then Julia wowed us with this smoked fish toast. It's grouper that's been cured and smoked. They add in this beautiful sunflower puree, some preserved lemon, Kalamata olives, parsley, and dill. 
with some fennel and braised radicchio. The vegan braised cabbage was up next. It's cabbage that's cooked in a sous vide with mushroom dashi, a radish top kimchi, garlic crisps, and fresh basil. This was followed by the Gulf Red Snapper. It's got a little bit of romesco sauce, seared zucchini, dill, mint, and squash blossoms. It's wonderful. You've been open six and a half years. In the six and a half years, you've managed to make everybody's best new chef list. You've been on GQ, Food and Wine, Bon Appetit, The Rob Report, plus I'm sure every local one. Obviously, you're an incredible talent and you're bringing all this energy and wonderful light and brightness to Nashville cuisine. Yeah. But is that also just a testament of what's happening in the food culture here? Absolutely. We do have an incredible chef community that's really collaborative and, and open and helpful, and it's a great scene to be a part of. You know, I grew up here. I was born and raised here. I went away from college, and then I worked in New York uh, in fine dining for about eight years before I moved back here. But when I moved back at the end of 2013, it was rapidly growing, and I think has changed more in the last five years than it did in the 15 years before that. And so it's just a really fun place to be. Beautifully like balanced, portions are perfect, and it's gorgeous. Chef, you've done such a lovely job. Thank you, You're appreciate welcome. it. Good Lord. Thank you for coming to visit. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Chef. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For a nice sit-down meal, you can't go wrong with Henrietta Red. But I've got a few more spots to hit before my tour of Nashville is over. Stick around. One of my favorite meals of the day is breakfast. So before I meet Greg, I've got to go check out this place called Egg Hill, which is in the Edge Hill village of Nashville. They're using local ingredients to create the best breakfast sandwich you've ever had. It says so right on their menu. Morning, Chef. Morning. How are you, bud? I'm excellent. Good, Good to see you. you. Thank you, you so much for having me. Yeah, we're good. All right, Sarah, what do you got in here? Um, I have Whoa. Some fish. Yeah. Look at this. It's good. It's so good. Oh my god, arugula on an egg sandwich. I was kind of hesitant at first with the arugula. Yeah. I almost ordered it without it, but uh, it's really good together. It feels like a burger. It's like a it's, breakfast burger. It is, yeah. This is wonderful. Look at this. I ordered the chef's surprise, so I have no idea what I'm about to get. So you've got grits, which we've made with some uh, stock we make from Parmesan rinds and Whoa. milk, and that's a jam witch. So eggs, sausage, goat cheese, some crispy onions, oh, and man. fresh jam. Grits. I've got the same sandwich, and I've got a hash brown casserole that we make with tater tots. Parts Britain opened Egg Hill with his business partner, Luke Williams. After the two fine dining chefs had a moment to rethink their career paths. What on earth would possess a talented fine dining chef to open a breakfast joint? So quality of life is a big driving factor in it. Um, you know, the restaurant industry is, is famously brutal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Long hours, the pandemic caused a lot of people to have sort of a, a rethink about what they were doing with their lives, you know, their sort of positions in their jobs, their careers, all that kind of stuff. This seemed like a really great opportunity for us to try to carve out a little bit higher quality of life for ourselves, for our staff. You know, we're able to go home every night, you have dinner with your partner, which is yeah. genuinely fantastic. How would you explain the food culture here? What's your favorite place to go? There are a lot of young people doing really cool stuff in Nashville right now. There's a taco truck and kind of tortilleria called Mais de la Vida that's in East Nashville that I, I think we're know, gonna have to make a stop. Y'all have gotta go there, I mean, seriously. We're gonna have to make a stop. They've got really, really beautiful made from scratch tortillas. It's an exciting place to cook, but it's also a really exciting place to eat. Yeah. Um, so, you know, which is one of the things that drew me into this industry is I love to eat. So yeah. <laughs> it's, that helps. it's been great, yeah. yeah. I don't think people typically that are not familiar with the state are thinking of, oh man, I'm gonna get there and go hiking. 
and then I'm gonna yeah. go find this awesome Kurdish food. That's not clicking with people that exactly. don't know, which is amazing, because that's really what I think the next wave of excitement should be around. It's like really oh, unusual, more interesting, and a little bit off the beaten path sort of thing, so. You know, the hot chicken, it's well established, but there's just so much more to try. The more experience you have yeah. with things that are different or unusual, the more rounded of a person you become. And, you know, as a cook, the, your food gets better, I think. You know, the more the more influences you can draw on, um, it's just kind of the more opportunities you have to, to make really tasty food. Well, this has been a wonderful chef. Thanks so much for um, having us over, letting us come and intrude on your breakfast. Love having you guys here. Now, with some breakfast in my belly, I'm meeting Greg on Rosemont Avenue in Nashville, where he says he's got a surprise lined up for me. Okay, Beach. welcome to my dojo. Whoa. Welcome to Drumbox Space. <sighs> Beautiful spot here in Nashville. This is an actual business where you can go and beat up on drums. Let's say, for instance, play drums. you're you know, a middle-aged middle Indian guy with no rhythm whatsoever. I'm this like, is for you. Hey, it's perfect for me, all right. Okay. I'm just gonna start with a little drum lesson for you. We're gonna just start with a real, real simple beat, okay? okay. Just a kick and just a snare. So we're gonna okay. just go with a like, simple beat like. Let's bring in our right hand. Just getting Other complicated. Hand. Other hand. Yeah. And we're going to cross our stick here. We're going to use this hi-hat. Yeah, yeah. We're just going to go, let's do this. OK, and then we're going to bring in the kick and the snare. Ready? It's weird, yeah. right? You're like, ah. Really weird. <laughs> All right. OK. I'm already confused. Okay. Just got to unlock the brain, man. Oh. Do drugs help? Or how does that usually? No, uh, you know. So I know you bring your bike along on tour, and we've ridden together on tour. Mostly, I know you love to post videos of you doing wheelies in the middle of nowhere uh, while you're in between doing sound check and getting up for the show. Having the bike on tour, like really mentally, has helped me a lot because I can kind of escape that bubble. Yeah. Go ride my bike and not think about that or think about something that's, oops, sure. you know, was frustrating or the night, night show before or whatever chaos is on tour, which there's a lot of. So. Well, Craig, Good thanks work. for the drums. Good work today. Thank, oh, th some of the finest work. Thank you for the good lessons. Work. All right, play us out, sir. Come on, you gotta play something good for us. I'll come over and oh, off the side with like you. Like Big Daddy style. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> this is like that ghost moment. <laughs> Thank God that's over. I've got a completely new respect for drummers, and now, Craig and I are off to visit one of the most talked about food trucks I have ever witnessed, right after this. When you visit Nashville, you're bound to hear about Julio Hernandez and his amazing food truck, Maez de la Vida. Julio has become famous for having the most authentic Mexican food you can get in the city, or really any city. Julio! Yeah. What's up, guys? Hello, buddy. How's it going? So nice Thank to you. meet you, man. So good to see you. Right. See you guys. Hey, welcome, welcome to East Nashville. Dude, so excited to be here. We've been hearing so much about your truck. What are you most known for? Uh, so we're most known for tortillas, yes. but moving forward, the quesabiria. Quesabiria. That is the most popular item. That sounds lovely. And what are the chances you'd let us come in the kitchen with you? All right, you. Me? You're good to go. You, you're too tall for the truck, brother. <laughs> you look like you can use a drink. Hey! Let's go. In. I'll meet you inside. Later. Come in, we're gonna learn. <laughs> come on, Michu. All right, chef, we're ready, man. Been hearing about your tacos for so long. We've seen the lines out there. We've seen the people. I'm excited to see what you do. So what are we making? That's so, plenty. Flautas. Yeah. These guys are stuffed with chicken and potato. OK. Check it out. These tortillas. Oh, man. It's a nixtamal tortilla. OK. White corn, blue corn, yellow corn. Beautiful. There's no colorants. There's no preservatives. This is just dry corn. And then they go in yeah. beef tallow. Tallow. That's the secret sauce. It gives it the nice crisp. And yeah. deliciousness. Look at that. You want to heat it with the right amount of cheese. Which the right that... amount of cheese being a lot of cheese. Yes, yes, totally. Yeah. And then we use uh, American wire beef. Okay. That is in Orberia. 
Okay. So American wild beef. It's American. local here. It comes from Kentucky. It's a hearty amount of beef right there. American wagyu with the collagen and the extra fat in there. All cooks right into the cheese. That already looks yeah, pretty good. It's wonderful. How are we doing on the uh, flautas? We go, we're looking for a uh, nice golden brown. Oh, no, I like you showing your arm. Nice golden brown. <laughs> yeah, right. here, show me. This is a little too much. much. No, too much. See, if he gets this much, it's a little too burnt, all right? It's key. It's key. Yep. Snuck out some flautas. All right. So, chef, we need to garnish. Cabbage. We're going to do the cabbage on the bottom. OK. Go for it. Cabbage. Boom. Then we're going to here with some uh, escabeche, some pickled yep. veggies. Put it right there. All right. All Next, right. we're in the south. So okay. we're going to say we're going to smother this oh, yeah, salsa. Yeah. You got to hit it with a little coquija cheese. Coquija. Go for it. Then we're going to hit it with a little lime. A little lime. Hit it with chile de arbol and oh, yeah. vinegar salsa. Nice. Boom. Right. Chef, we're burning the quesadilla okay. behind us. It's going Put it right there. Yeah. So you see how that cheese is hot? Yeah. Well, now we gotta open them. We gotta this make it efficient. Space. Yeah. So this same sauce is really that good because it goes here too. Oh man. The salsa there helps us combine all the flavors. You wanna take this inside? Yeah, I'll take these. Watch your head. You're almost too tall. I get that a lot. <laughs> I'm, you're almost tall. But of course, since it's a taco truck, there's no seating and we take our food to go. But lucky for us, not a long trip. Julio's truck is parked directly in front of the Chopper Tiki Bar. Frankly, it's a match made in heaven. Welcome to Chopper. Thank you, Chef. How awesome is it, though? You have a bar right in front of your restaurant. I'll, I'll speak for uh, myself, but I think it's every taco truck's dream yeah. to have a bar in front of you. All right. Food-wise. Yeah. I got quesabiria, it's my favorite. These are the flautas, little escabeche veggies, uh, some elote. Uh, the corn comes from Mexico. Okay. The beef comes from Kentucky. Wow. A lot of the produce comes from Nashville. Cool. It's like Mexican food meets Tennessee. It really works. The history of Julio and Maya's de la Vida is destined to be a modern version of the great American success story. Maiz de la Vida started with a stimulus check. That's right. how all these got started. And then uh, we were lucky enough to find Chopper. We purchased an Academy Sport griddle. Pull it over there in that corner outside the door, and the neighborhood either heard about it or smelled about it. <laughs> yeah. And that's where maize began, man. It's uh, the roots of maize is the name, yeah. uh, maize de la vida, uh, the tree of life. That's where we got the idea of the name. Oh, yeah. Every culture has a different story about the tree of life. I like to think every culture has its own way of eating corn. Hands down, every single person we've talked to this <laughs> last yeah. week has said we have to come to your truck. It's so true. It's true. Everywhere we went, we have heard that. So what was the secret? What do you think made it pop from just you on the patio with the flat top to this incredible machine you have going now? It's, uh, I'm wearing it right here, the word Nixtamal. Nixtamal is a 6,000-year-old technique of how to cook tortillas. Really? So our secret is tortillas. We make it the way that's scientifically proven 6,000 years ago they were being made. Whoa. And then some point ahead in life, we forgot and we went with commodity. It's amazing. And that's that's a secret. It's, it's simple, it's, but right it's also here. complicated. Yeah. All right, Chef. Uh, thank you so much, man. This has been amazing. Yeah, so nice to meet you. Thank you. We're so happy we got food. to steal you for a couple minutes. Uh, oh, hey, Greg. Before you get super busy, but we appreciate you, man. This is wonderful. Mm -hmm.